at Stuart 7A model steam plant and this is part 10 fitting the new combination bracket for the reversing gear and steam inlet and here is the finished special bracket that I made not only does this bracket support the reversing gear it also allows a steam inlet to the steam chest a few viewers commented and said well why didn't you block up these holes on this side and make the steam inlet on the other side of the steam chest well the answer to that is because it would look terrible this at least is fully functional and while on the subject of being fully functional, I am not. I've got a really bad cold. I don't think it's man flu, but it's fairly bad. I always find the best way to counteract feeling ill is to do something that takes your mind off the fact that you're ill in the first place. So here I am on the 30th of December 2019 in my workshop early in the morning. I'm securing the existing exhaust flange to my bracket. The problem is the thread in this exhaust flange is not very good at all. But it's okay as a guide for the tap so I can tap all the way through the brass part and all the way through the steam chest. And that's why I drilled the hole in the brass bracket 7 seconds of an inch which is tapping size for quarter by 40 threads per inch. After the tapping operation I blew away any swarf that was present using an airline. A lot of people ask me about this. Well don't you worry about the swarf going inside the engine. My answer is no not normally because I usually do this but I don't put it on the videos. I do not recommend using an airline to blow metal particles away without wearing breathing equipment and eye protection. But to stop the annoying whinging comments, yes, I generally blow away the swarf using an airline. Over now to the lathe to make a threaded adapter. This is a piece of phosphor bronze, although I think it's really alum bronze. It's quite hard to cut this stuff. Look how the chippings are coming off in one piece. This is often a good indication of the correct feed and speed. Oh, and did I forget, when you're machining alum bronze, always use a very sharp cutting tool. Alum bronze is a very strong, very tenacious material. And in the past, I've used it for making axle boxes for miniature steam locomotives. All I'm doing at the moment is cleaning up the front face of the alum bronze. Very shortly, I'll be using a centre drill to drill this, and then I'm going to drill all the way down the middle. But first of all, I need to reduce its outside diameter to a quarter of an inch. And look how these chippings are coming off. This is absolutely beautiful. You can cut alum bronze without coolant, but it's better cutting it with coolant, because if the tool is anywhere near blunt, it will get very hot indeed. In the videos that I make, I do not use coolant, because it would splash onto the camera, and it's very nasty stuff, I don't really like it. It's worth remembering that this is my home workshop, it's a very modest home workshop, with very modest equipment. And I do that on purpose, I could buy a bigger, much more expensive, powerful lathe. But I work on this old Boxford lathe just to show that you do not need to have really flash equipment to turn out a good product. Over the years, by a multitude of people in very small domestic workshops like mine, many very beautiful things have been created. Really good equipment does help, but it's down to the person doing the job at the end of the day. As you can clearly see, periodically I use a micrometer to just sample the diameter. I don't want to go under a quarter of an inch, and I don't want to be over a quarter of an inch either. This is very close, but there's a bit more metal to take off yet. Don't forget though, it's easy to remove the metal, but it's a little bit more difficult to put it back on. A quick check with the micrometer tells me I'm very close, so it's time to go all the way down the work. When you machine alum bronze, it makes a bit of a squeaking noise, I find which is a bit annoying, but at least I'm getting a good finish. And that is down to the correct speed and feed and a very sharp cutting tool. If you use coolant in the lathe, what's going to happen is you're able to turn it at a faster speed and take a deeper cut. But in this case, what's the rush? After all, it is a hobby. It is not commercial industry. Yet another check with the micrometer shows me that the piece of bar is too thou over the size that it needs to be, which is quarter of an inch. If I set the cross slide hand wheel to a one thou division, then when I turn the part, two thou will be removed from the work. With the piece of bar at the correct diameter, it's now time to use a centre drill first, and here I'm using a twist drill to drill all the way down the turned part. I need this adapter to be strong, so the hole is only 9 sixty-fourths in diameter, and this will be perfectly fine for the size of the engine. I should be able to get plenty of steam into the steam chest. Whenever you drill hard materials, it's always a good idea to frequently withdraw the drill bit and then brush off all the swarf. 
just in case you're confused that's a paintbrush and not my beard. The next part of the job is the threading operation. I've used some lubrication for this job and I'm now cutting a quarter by 40 thread using a quarter by 40 threads per inch die. Note to self, when using materials like Allen bronze, really tighten the chuck. Allen bronze is a very slippy metal, and as you can see, it was spinning around in the chuck. I've engaged back gear to slow the lathe down, and what I've done here is remove the tool post, and that's so I can use the top surface of the compound slide to stop the die holder from spinning around. And once it's threaded all the way down, it's a simple job to put the lathe in reverse, and this allows me to back off the die holder sort of unscrew it from the newly cut thread. When threading under power, it's not a good idea to hold the part in place. It's not too bad for certain metals, but certainly not for this metal. But being a keyboard player, I need to use my hands for playing keyboards. I don't want bits of fingers all over the lathe. I always keep my hands well out of the way of moving parts. These are quite small machines, but they could do a lot of damage. Every one of these machines is far harder than I am. Time now to part off the component. You will notice in the previous clip, I've disengaged the back gear so the lathe is now going much faster. In this clip you can notice an audible squeak. That's because the parting tool is really not sharp enough. I got there in the end, I cleaned up both ends of the part on the belt sander. And here I'm applying some Loctite 542 hydraulic seal to make sure this part doesn't leak. As shown here, I've temporarily fitted a quarter by 40 union nut onto the end of the thread. So now by using a socket, it is very easy to screw the part into position. But what happens when I reverse it to remove the nut? But thankfully, the Loctite 542 quickly cures. This holds the part in place, so I just slacken off the nut on the end. Then it can be removed. This small green T-piece was originally screwed into the inlet manifold but it was a bit weedy, and also the small displacement lubricator needed an adapter. In the next episode, I'll be showing how I make a specialist T-piece to suit the job. For now though, I'm just temporarily fitting the steam chest cover. This will have to come off when I set the valve timing, but I just wanted to make sure the steam chest cover fitted okay with my bracket in place. I'm initially tightening these nuts using a small nut spinner. I've left one of them off because that's where there's going to be some support for the reversing lever. The special assembly that allows you to fix the position of the reversing lever is the last thing to make. And that's a few episodes away, but it won't be long now. I'd like to take this opportunity to wish all of my Patreon supporters a very healthy, happy, prosperous new year in 2020. And I wish the same to anyone watching this video. But unfortunately, you won't see it until we are in 2020, so the sentiment doesn't really work. And that's it for the last video of 2019. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.